Welcome to District Dialogue. My name is Ann jones Guider. I'm the Commissioner for District 4 here in Douglas County. And today we have three very special guests that have a, a that do a tremendous job, not only in Douglas County, but also Carroll and Paulding. We're, we've invited all three of them here because the uh, viewing or the airing of uh, our DCTV actually goes into all three counties, so that's why I've in included uh, the three of them. I'm going to introduce them one at a time, but I want uh, each one of them, if they would, just tell me how they got involved. We will be talking about FCA. That is, that is a, an organization uh, for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and they, do, they go into the schools, they do a tremendous job. So the first one is the one, the representative of Douglas County, which is Jay Webb. And Jay, if you would just kind of tell me how you got involved with the FCA. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us, first of all. <laughs> uh, I am uh, Jay Webb, the area director for Douglas County. And uh, I've been in that spot uh, since May the 1st of this year, but I've been with FCA. I actually started, my journey started uh, July 2000 and. 15 mm -hmm. and uh, I was actually in line. I've been in corporate world by vocational ministry, but corporate world and was getting ready to plant a church uh, through my home church. And so I actually reached out to Jeff Hughes down here because I was going to plant a church in his area. And so I called him and said, Hey, how, I want to get involved with FCA. And I hear that the fellowship of Christian athletes is the way uh, to get into the schools. And that's kind of the banner we need to fly under to get into the schools. And so I reached out to him for that. And he said, well, we're actually having a football camp at the University of West Georgia here in a couple of weeks, and we'd love for you to come serve. Mm -hmm. And so I you know, love football, love Jesus, so I said, <laughs> sure, why not? And so I showed up at, uh, really, really early at the University of West Georgia and served all day and just fell in love with the ministry of FCA. And I felt that day kind of the calling toward something more than just uh, volunteering at camp. And mm -hmm. so long story short, by October, I was uh, turning in my resignation, uh, my notice at uh, my at, corporate world with your job. job. Yep. All right. And uh, started my fundraising process. And uh, January 1, 2016, I left uh, corporate world and uh, comfortable paychecks and all that good stuff and took a nosedive uh, into FCA. And so here we are uh, almost two years later. And uh, God is blessing tremendously. Yeah. Uh, served. Uh, in the West Georgia area with Jeff for uh, for a year and a half uh, before coming over as being the area director for Douglas County. But it's truly a calling. It's an absolute uh, calling. Absolutely yes, a calling. Is. Now, uh, did you ever work under uh, Dutch Nelson, who was the uh, representative for Douglas County? I worked alongside Dutch when uh -huh. I was in West Georgia. Um, Dutch was over Douglas County. I was responsible for Bremen High School, Harrelson County High School, and Villa Rica. So, of course, Villa Rica and Douglas County uh, just, you know, right next to each other. So, so Dutch and I did a lot of work uh, together uh -huh. uh, in, in, in kind of the line where, you know, Mason Creek sits right up to that line and, and that kind of thing. So. Well, I, I knew Dutch because he kind of grew up with my boys yeah, uh, yeah. over at Alexander and everything. Um, now, Brooke, uh, this is Brooke Sheely. Yes, now, you are uh, sitting in for uh, Robbie uh, mm -hmm. Finley, yes, uh, and I've known Robbie for many years too, uh, involved with their golf tournament and everything, but um, welcome, and I know that Robbie would be here if he could. I think he's having a little medical procedure done and everything, so that's why he asked you to step in. Um, how did you get involved? Um, so. It was, it was kind of an accident. It was totally unplanned. Um, it never, usually is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Never did I ever think that I would be um, fortunate enough to work for FCA. It kind of seemed like something that somebody like me wouldn't get to do. Um, but just by happenstance, um, came met Robbie. Um, he was friends with um, some family of mine with my brother and um, was working to try to get him involved in another ministry that I was working with at the time. What and was that? Um, it was a, a mother's, it was a women's and mother's ministry um, okay. at a local church. And um, so um, just through having a couple conversations with him, realized that maybe I could um, try to help mm -hmm. so in some areas that they needed someone to come and kind of step in and help with and um, was going to start small. 
and it's just grown <laughs> a lot. It's it's really neat to see what God's done through something that I'd never planned, uh, but His plans are, are always better than ours. So. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I direct uh, Celebrate Recovery at Douglas at Ephesus Baptist Church mm -hmm. and we've been doing it for 14 years and we've never been bored. Yes. Never never resented giving up your Friday nights to go. Absolutely. And it's just uh, it's like like I say you know when you've been called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that and uh, we'll step over to Jeff Hughes. Now you represent Carroll County. Yes ma'am. So tell me how you got involved. Well, when I was in 10th grade, I grew up in East Point, and I was uh, in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes as a student. And I began to think around the 10th grade, what am I going to do when I graduate? And so uh, I looked at the men and women who were the most influential in my life, happened to be Christian coaches at our school. I would felt a call to ministry, but I didn't see myself being a, a senior pastor or someone who led music. And I like to work with youth, but back then music and youth were kind of a, a <laughs> dual a dual job yeah <laughs> and so I reasoned in my mind if I uh, could be a Christian coach that perhaps I could have a positive influence on the whole campus because most schools the students look up to the athletes and the athletes look up to the coaches absolutely and so uh, I decided to go and and dedicate my life to being a, a teacher and a coach and so I went I was an FCA in high school I went to Georgia Southern where I was an FCA there and when I became a teacher and coach in Fulton County I became the huddle leader or the, the head of FCA for that school I was in mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't even know it at the time when I was in 10th grade but the ministry of FCA tries to reach the campus to and through the coach and so I, I didn't realize that then but that's really what our philosophy is all about so I'd, I'd spent 30 years in education, 14 as a teacher and a coach, 10 years as a high school assistant principal. When I was a high school assistant principal, I was largely in charge of discipline. And then I was promoted in Fulton County to be the coordinator of student discipline. During that time, we moved out to West Georgia and I was driving 108 miles round trip and just to deal with students who had discipline issues constantly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after 30 years, I thought, well, I'm too young to quit working, but I'm too old to keep doing this, <laughs> and uh, I, I retired. But I stepped right into pursuing a, a position with FCA, and I've been now in West Georgia FCA for five years, five and a half years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's strange that you came from discipline into this, mm -hmm. but it really isn't because, uh, you know, the Bible says a lot about discipline. and. Uh, you probably learned a lot of um, tools, or, uh, came up with a lot of tools in that capacity to use uh, even in, with FCA, do you think? Well, one of the things I did, I was a school administrator, you know, for 16 years, and, uh -huh. and I think my gift is administration. I'm not the great speaker that Jay is. Uh, <laughs> and He's got a great voice, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> but you do too. Well, thank you. He's, he's a tremendous speaker. And, and Robbie does a great job over in Paulden County too, but I, I think my gift is kind of heading it up and, and seeing the administrative part of the ministry. Okay, all right. Well, let's learn, uh, let's uh, teach the audience mm -hmm. a little bit about FCA. Well, just exactly what is it? I mean, give us a little history of it. All right. Well, uh, FCA again, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, it's a ministry, a nonprofit ministry, 501c3. Mm -hmm. uh, what a lot of people don't know is all of us are full-time missionaries. We all, mm -hmm. um, our ministry is completely uh, just faith-based, and we depend on uh, churches and businesses and individuals to, to support us uh, financially and volunteering and that kind of thing. And so uh, we go into the school. We, FCA's been around since 1954, started out as just uh, camps, and then it's just moved into the campuses of the schools uh, ever since and uh, we believe and the reason we do what we do is that our local schools are truly our largest mission fields uh, oh. they're, they're really the largest mission field if you look at the statistics I think in the United States um, 4,400 suicides each year mm -hmm. uh, on our, with our high schoolers and teenagers 50% uh, are sexually active 50% are consuming al alcohol by the time uh, they're you know out of high school and and really the the crazy number is is that only 20 percent 
uh, in this area, in the West Georgia area, only about 20% of our high schoolers actually go to a church on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the reason we do what we do is because they got to go to school. And uh, we feel like that we uh, serve as the bridge from the school to the church and from the church back to the school. And so uh, that that's why we're so passionate because we know that there is an extreme need walking mm -hmm. the halls of, of, of every high school and middle school. Uh, and if we can get to them and disciple them and mentor them and, and teach them character, uh, then it could very much have an impact on the rest of their life. You know, the state of Georgia passed a law in, I think it was 1999, mm -hmm. uh, that these schools are supposed to teach character traits. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all the other things that's on their, the teachers and the administrator plates, in school, sometimes it's just a bulletin board with a, a character word up there. But um, uh, I'm glad to hear you say that you do teach character because uh, I think in society as in, as a whole, we're lacking character. Uh, that's why I like to have positive things on my district dialogue. This is not about politics. It's not about Ann Jones Guider. It's about what is good that's happening uh, in our surrounding communities and everything so uh and this fuck i want i'll add something we we have really changed our philosophy uh within fca in the last couple of years and, and used to you would call uh people chaplains and we've actually changed that up now to where we call them character coaches because we want well, to be <laughs> we want to be able to go in and and because of all the freedom from religion and all the different laws that keep you we can go in and teach character uh whether that be integrity or excellence or purpose or respect or whatever it may be yeah. we can go in and teach character to these to these students and and still just so into their lives and then they know the spiritual backgrounds there too and they can come to us for their spiritual needs but but we're there to sow in some character things for them. That so. is great. That is great. Uh, now how long has uh, FCA been in existence? Did you did 1954. You 1954. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I got involved mostly with uh, Paulden County first uh, through, um, uh, I've got so many names up here, so, I, uh, uh, Robbie. But, uh, you know, I, every time they had a golf tournament and everything like that, I would kind of help with that. But, uh, and then Dutch came and he started the one over here and uh, then now you've taken it over, and it's nice to meet you too, yes, by the way. Um, all right, uh, what uh, strategies do you have going as far as uh, your vision here in Douglas County? So our vision is to, um, and Jeff hit on this a little bit, our vision statement is to see the world impacted for Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's not, we get the question a lot, was FCA, does that mean it's only for athletes? It's not only for athletes. But we believe that if we minister to and through the coach and the athlete, then more people in the school are going to hear it, right? Well, doesn't it also include, like, the cheerleaders and people Includes like that? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma so even, even the band is welcome. I mean, we're an athletic ministry, but what we're trying to do is use the athletic, the, the influence that the athletes have Absolutely. to attract everybody. They're usually the heroes uh, in that uh society so um so uh do you have anything to add to it as far as what what y'all are doing over there Absolutely. in Alden county yeah so uh, just very recently we have started um, increasing our ministry specifically to the coaches and one way that we're doing that is by ministering to their wives um, oh my yeah goodness, it's been yes. a really neat to see this ministry grow um so we are serving meals to the families of the coaches um, before friday night home games in some of our schools and uh, just to see these ladies and their kids come in, um, a lot of them work full time or part time. And, and we know as mothers and wives what it's like to try to run home and get your kids and, and then get <laughs> to there, support your husband. One. <laughs> and and uh, one way that we can sort of love on our coaches is to love on their families because we Absolutely. know that that's their first priority yes. at home. Um, so we just are serving them and um, just being so well received um, across the county with that and just praying that that ministry continues to grow. Yeah. Um, just increasing our, our Bible study time and our huddles with our coaches. Um, seeing that grow has been really neat. Um, and we've seen a lot of individual relationships pop up, um, just where 
some of our staff can sort of come alongside certain people in our community who are needing and, and hurting and watching those relationships flourish and uh, making disciples out of them and their family. So that's been really neat. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're just on fire over there. Yes. So <laughs> Jeff, exciting. have you got any, anything to add? Yes, ma'am. The uh, Coach's Wives Ministry uh, that Brooke touched on, uh -huh. we're, we're doing that in, in our area as well. Actually, Jay's wife heads that up. And what we've done is uh, gone in and just tried to create relationships with those coaches' wives. And some of them have uh, become quite close because when a coach is new to an area, the wife is also new to the area. Oh, yes. She doesn't know what pharmacy to go to or what uh, they're looking for a church home. And, and so what the coaches' wives have done is they've connected with new coaches' wives and there's a network there of support for them and so they have become they feel more a part of the community and uh, Jay's wife Allison has a Facebook group that she's constantly encouraging them and so if there's a need for a coach's wife maybe maybe they had a baby or maybe mm -hmm. there's a surgery coming up or something the other <laughs> coaches wives rally around each other that wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the, F the Fellowship of Christian Athletes providing a format to minister to the coaches' wives, and as we minister to the coaches' wives, we're ministering we, to the whole family. <laughs> right, and we find that the door is even more wide open when we come to a campus and say, "Hey, coach, we'd like to uh, maybe after after practice one day, could we bring some popsicles and do a brief devotional?" It's all on voluntary basis. Yeah. But it, but of course, if we're ministering to his wife, mm. uh, he's going to be more apt to let us have that that opportunity to minister to his team. Yes. And so our, our ministry focuses on what we call the four C's. And, and we've talked about the three, uh, the, one of those already. They're, they're, they're coaches, campuses, camps, and community. So right. our first focus. You could add was, character too. Well, it all. <laughs> could be four. <laughs> right. And so uh, we've talked about our, our, camp, our coaches ministry. And we have coaches retreats for maybe a coach and his wife are struggling in their marriage. We can send them co to a, a coaches retreat, a camp to where they can reconnect and get some counseling if they need it. We do that kind of thing. And uh, we have coaches Bible studies where they can meet before or after school. We always usually meet before because once your school starts, it's a uh, it, it, very hectic pace. And mm -hmm. so uh, we have co well, all of us have coaches Bible studies going on on these campuses. Jay, why don't you talk about the other three C's? Yeah, so as we talked about strategy. So we use the four C's, coaches, campuses, camps, and community. Um, Big time in the coaches ministry, uh, and, and he mentioned a lot of things that we're doing there. Campus is our, uh, we've really got three or four different ways that we, it's our student huddles. That's the, that's the thing that you see before school on, uh, on you know, Tuesday through Friday mornings, uh, all the schools in Douglas County, high school and middle schools. Uh, they meet, they come together, they have a huddle sponsor, uh, so it's an organized club. And so we come together before school and uh, we have students that are leading worship, we have students that are speaking, we may bring in uh, guest speakers. Um, so we have anywhere from some schools. I was at Lithia Springs High School this morning with 60 students packed in a room eating chicken biscuits and uh, <laughs> listening to the word. So I bet uh, I know where the chicken came from. Yes. It, <laughs> yeah, can't spell FCA without <laughs> CFA. Play, right? So, uh, but uh, so yeah, so we do our student huddles. Um, that's how we get on the campus. We do team huddles, as Jeff mentioned. Um, I am a big believer in popsicles and Jesus. Um, there's something about after a hot practice uh, in the gym or on the field or on the mat, there's just something about a cold popsicle that just opens the hearts of these players. And so uh, we do a lot of team huddles in this area where we go in and we'll do a character study and uh, we'll serve them popsicles. And uh, man, we just become their, their favorite people. They love. They love to see me coming up with my blue cooler full of popsicles. <laughs> and uh, I've learned that that never goes out because I did a camp a while back that had NFL players at it, and the NFL players were tearing wow. off the popsicles too. So, uh, so, so that's how. So we do student huddles, we do team huddles, we do leadership huddles. Um, so we're like this morning. I, I implemented. Uh, define huddle. A huddle. It's yes, thank a, you. Okay. So we call to so put that athletic spin on a huddle. Simply a Bible study, okay. a small group that okay. we do. So if we say a, a coach's huddle. It's a, coaches, a group of coaches that are getting together to study the Word. All right. uh, if we do a team huddle, it's we're getting around as a small group with just the team. And then our student huddle is where it's open to the entire school. Uh, but it just gives uh, the word small group or Bible study a nice athletic spin on it when we say huddle. Yes. Okay, so, 
Uh, and so we do leadership huddles or small groups. Okay. Um, and so this is where you may have, if, uh, for instance, Alexander mm -hmm. High School has uh, 200 to 300 students showing up every Friday morning uh, for wow. the student huddle. For is Biscuits. that the largest huddle here in Douglas County? It is probably the largest in the country right now, actually. Really? Right here in Douglas County. It's one of the largest. At one point, uh, we, when we hit That's that 300 fantastic. mark, we were running as the largest huddle in the country uh, right here at Alexander High School. So. But the way that the reason it's 300 is they have an incredible leadership huddle where they've got about 20 students to 30 students that man they come together and make it happen. They plan it. They get the speakers lined up. They get the worship lined up. They make sure the biscuits are lined up, <laughs> and it just truly teaches them that principle of leadership. And and uh, so so that's how we get onto the campuses is um, through these different small group uh, studies. So the leadership are actually the students. Yes. Not absolutely. not just. Adults. Yes, ma'am. That's that's great. We want to empower these these students. We, look, I've I've told I, you know, Jeff referenced. I love to preach, um, <laughs> and I love to speak, and I could speak for this forty five minutes and not hush. But <laughs> I have learned when I came into this this ministry, I'm like, man, I want to speak to as many kids as I can speak to, and I've learned that that I can have the best sermon ever, man, and all the points start with the same letters, and everything is perfect and they will listen to a one of their peers, one of their mm -hmm. students stumble through a five minute testimony and it will mean way more than any message that I can ever preach. And that's what we wanna do is empower these students to share their stories. Well, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned that we uh, direct the Celebrate Recovery mm -hmm. at my church and testimonies are the most powerful tool Absolutely. that we have. And we have, uh, you'd be surprised how many testimonies you can come up to. Yes. But they can relate better uh, they've been there and done that, and, and, and testimony is just so powerful. Yes, um, but um, are, how many huddles do we have here in Douglas County? In Douglas County, we have 67 huddles that oh. meet. Um, and that, and, what age? Group? And that goes from uh, that goes from middle school right now, all the way through high school. We even have some uh, some travel ball teams that meet um, that we consider those huddles, uh -huh. and so community huddles. Um, so we, right now we have 67 uh, that are meeting, and that, and that may not be that they're all meeting right now, but for instance, you know, we may have a baseball huddle that's going on. So they don't meet until the Good, spring. because I've it, got a son that plays there you baseball, go. So, Alexander. Yeah. yeah, so we have... <laughs> I mean, um, a grandson, I said okay, son. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so we have, we have 67 uh, huddles, and that's coaches and leadership and team and student. All of those combined, we have 67 huddles that are meeting in Douglas County uh, during this, this school year. How about uh, over in Paulding County? So Brooke. we've got, um, we've seen our huddles pick up um, mm -hmm. and the, the neatest thing about that is we're now in elementary schools out right. in Paulding County. So we have six of our elementary schools um, now have established huddles that are meeting um, a couple times a month at so least. So they have athletes? They are not um, focused directly on the athletes, but they are working on some of those character traits that you touched on. Okay. Um, you know, giving them some leadership skills and abilities that, um, you know, comes al along with becoming an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so, and a lot of the students that attend are involved in recreational sports, but in Paulding County, um, yeah, m elementary school is, is recreation sports only. Okay. Um, so, um, all of our middle schools have huddles, or all of our high schools have huddles. And How then, many do you have? Um, I would say that we had probably uh, between 30 and 40 huddles okay. that are active right now. Very good. Yes, ma'am. So. All right, Jeff, how about you over in Carroll County? Well, in West Georgia FCA includes Carroll, Hurd, and Harrelson. Okay. And there are, there are 21 campuses in that footprint, and we have a FCA presence on 20 out of the 21 campuses. And we have 70 huddles, reaching about 1,500 students and coaches a week. And as Jay said, right now we're not really touching the baseball students, but basketball and wrestling are, are gearing up. And so uh, our huddles for the football that still play in our meeting, the uh, volleyball team seasons have come to an end. So we're transitioning now into the winter sports, but we are very thankful to be able to have the access we have on, on all, we're not on one campus, and uh, yet there's another ministry that's doing a marvelous job over there, first priority, and we're very glad for that. We, we don't look at it like we're competing with them. Oh, no. We look at it like the more <laughs> lights on a campus, person. the less <laughs> darkness there is. Mm -hmm. And, so, and so we've talked about coaches and we've talked about campuses, but two other parts of our ministry 
are uh, camps and community. And if, as our other guests have alluded to, community sports is a tremendous opportunity to reach kids at a young level. There are seven million students playing high school sports in America. Well, but Jay, uh, uh, Jay mentioned travel ball, and my grandson is involved in travel ball, but oftentimes that takes away the church going because they, they travel and they play, they practice on Sunday. So, uh, what we would like to do, I was saying there were 7 million students playing high school ball, but there are 44 million playing youth sports. Yes. And so our focus in our West Georgia area has primarily been on the middle and high schools. If we had additional staff, we'd love to take on mm -hmm. the responsibility of ministering to the community sports, the travel mm -hmm. ball teams. Yes. A lot of parents want to... Travel ball has become big, they uh, wanna, even bigger than Rick. They want to go to church, but they've made a commitment to the team, yes. so they're torn between the two. What if we were to have a tent at a softball tournament or a soccer tournament on a Sunday yes. and offer them a chance to have a chapel service? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that would be amazing. And we could give out Bibles, and, and we haven't done a lot of that simply because of resources, meaning personnel and, and finances, but that's a goal we have to reach the community sports. Mm -hmm. I have, my older son was involved in rodeo mm -hmm. <laughs> and they had a ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I thought that was neat because they're, uh, they were always traveling to the, to the events and everything on the weekend, but they actually held church uh, before the rodeo uh, event and everything. Uh, so do you see um, growth in the number uh, of students coming into the huddles? Uh, I'll just let all of y'all yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll run down just our numbers real quick. We call these keys to victory, but I think it shows our growth. Um, I mentioned uh, 67 huddles uh, that we have going. What that really equals for us is on a weekly basis, we're able to touch over 2,000 students, athletes, and coaches in Douglas County. That is awesome. Um, so that, that's our <laughs> huddles combined. That's our teams. That's our coaches. Um, so it's over 2,000 a week that we're reaching uh, on a weekly basis. Um, we sent, this past summer, we sent 120 uh, coaches and athletes to camp. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to grow that number to send them to the, the camps that we do. Um, we've had 178 uh, decisions for Christ, uh, salvations and, and recommitments to Christ uh, in the last year. So 178, which I think is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, 425 Bibles distributed. Um, that we've given out. We, we never, ever turn anybody down for a Bible. We love to hand out Bibles. Mm -hmm. um, and so that number's growing in the amount of Bibles that we're giving out. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, we, we came up with this number, and, and Dutch was part of this, helping me come up with this number, but over <laughs> 23,000 uh, that we fed over the last year. Oh, uh, my goodness. And, and coaches and athletes and students. And that goes from coaches' wives to biscuits to popsicles to pregame meals, you name it. Um, we fed a whole lot of people in Douglas County. Um, with so. the help of a lot of corporations. Yes, around. With the, and we could not do that. We have 21, just in Douglas County, we have 21 church partnerships uh, that are just local church partnerships. And I promise you, we could not feed or reach or, uh, or, or distribute Bibles or financially be able to do this without our church and business partnerships that we have. Okay. Um, you want to touch on community uh, as far as what what all do they actually have projects that they go into the community to help other people or other organizations? We've done um, <coughs> in, in Paulding County um, some of our groups. I know our lacrosse FCA lacrosse team did go into over the summer and do some um, packing some lunches and delivering some groceries to some families in our community who who needed that help. Kind of like um, a faith in action. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, and that's something that I definitely see us trying to, to build on in the future because um, a, a big part of, of what we try to teach is, you know, like the character trait to, to be like Jesus and, mm -hmm. and to instill that into our, um, our athletes and, and the student body in our campuses. So. Well, that's great. And are y'all growing? Do you oh, absolutely. We're growing. And, um, just two very neat, neat, neat stories. Um, one of them is just in our one of our middle schools. Um, we have seen it go from almost non-existent to uh, 70, 70 plus students in a middle school huddle, which is a great number for a middle school huddle. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing uh, kids getting saved on 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 Friday, Thursday, Friday, 
and uh, Wednesday mornings at their huddles, which is really neat. Um, but you talk about growth, and one of the really neat things that I was able to see over the last couple months is at our Fields of Faith event. Um, it was just a what was that Fields of Fields of Faith? Of faith. Yes, okay. ma'am. We okay. had it at Hiram High School this year. All right. Um, uh, just a, a really neat event for students to come. It's it's student led, um, and uh, just powerful night where they get to share their testimonies and encourage one another um, and just in, uh, empower one another and, and give them the, mm -hmm. the courage to stand for Jesus. And um, one of the neatest things at the, at the end of the night, of course, there was a, a time of invitation and uh, we had seven young people give their life to Christ, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked down to um, come alongside one of the young men who mm -hmm. had um, made the decision and had a card and a Bible and, and gave that to him and was gonna start a conversation with him. And before I could start the conversation with him, one of our student leaders took over and it just showed me um, personal growth. Uh -huh. and, and I think that that is so important. We talk about numbers and how many and, and uh, how big, but uh, just to see that young man mm -hmm. and uh, how he's really been developed through the ministry of FCA to be a leader, to come alongside his peer was really special. Yes. Yeah. Jeff, how about your huddles? How many, uh, I mean, uh, are y'all growing? Uh, do you? Well, yes, ma'am. And when I came on in 2012, there were three schools doing FCA and there were three huddles. And so now we're on 20 campuses and have 70 huddles. Do y'all go into the college uh, over there, uh, West Georgia? Well, we would like to, but okay. we are, because of lack of staff, we focus more on the high school and middle schools. Okay because when I started it was just me at doing three counties and all those 20 campuses and yet at the University of West Georgia they have full-time people like with campus outreach or the Baptist Student Union or whatever the Baptist Student Ministries okay. are they're, they're full-time there and I, they can actually do a better job as a full-time missionary than we can kind of hit and miss it right, part but we do have relationships with those coaches over there uh -huh. and some of the teams We've provided Bibles. We have the largest football camp in the country meets at the University of West Georgia, the largest FCA football camp. Okay. And so we have relationships with the people okay. at the university. <laughs> we don't actually minister to them, but we, we, we can provide resources for them. And then they've come and sh shared their testimony at, at, our, te at our camp. And, now, at your camps, do you have uh, pros come in and talk to the athletes? We have, yes, ma'am, as they're available. Now, our camps are primarily in the summer, and if, if they're NFL, then they may have an opportunity to come. They may not. Yes. If they're in ba they're professional baseball, they can't. Yes. But uh, we've, what we found is some people who have been in the NFL, been in Major League Baseball, been in the NBA, as their career comes to end, yeah. Uh, they're a little bit more accessible. We have Terry Harper here in right. Douglas County. Y'all may have uh, mm -hmm. had him to come and talk. Now, I think I cut you off a while ago. Or uh, uh, What were you going to say? Well, we're talking about community, and uh, we I know right now we're working on it coming up in November, December, the holidays. We've got several uh, leadership huddles uh, that, are, that are getting ready to, to serve with the pantry. Uh, right here in town. Amen. And, uh, Frank Smith does yes, a wonderful yes, job Frank with and that. And the great, care place. Yeah, they do and a great job. Too. So so we've got students, some of our student huddles are going to be getting out in the community uh, during this holiday season to help serve. Uh, Crossroads has got a, a mobile pantry they're doing this this weekend that we've got some students going to to help with that. So so we're big time about getting into the community um, and, and getting the students out of the schools and getting them in the community to serve. And so we, we're very, very uh, grateful for that. Now, um, do y'all ever receive any pushback for what you do in the schools? Is, because it just well, absolutely. Seems... I think if we're doing God's <coughs> work, we're going to receive pushback. Yes, so, I think that, um, that's, in, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, in the Word. And, and that's okay. Um, we try to, we, and, and I say that, but we try to do everything um, by the books. We are blessed and fortunate because FCA is a uh, school sponsored huddle just like an, uh, just like a 4-H or uh, an FBLA it's a it's an, uh, an huddle a approved uh -huh. huddle and so we understand the the freedom that that gives us but we also believe in doing it by the books and and making sure that it is student-led and that it is voluntary and that it is before mm -hmm. contract you have hours to jump through all those loops, we do don't you and, and, and we're okay we'll jump through hoops for Jesus that's all right. day that's right, right. <laughs> um, 
Now, I know that you have needs. Yes. And uh, you can't do all of this without uh, supports from individuals and corporations. So if y'all would all touch on that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hit ours real quick. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, we are a faith-based organization, a nonprofit, everything, our salaries, those biscuits, those Bibles, those uh, popsicles, everything that we do uh, is because somebody is supporting us and giving to our ministry um, financially and through their time. And so uh, for me right now, I'm the only full-time guy in uh, Douglas County. So uh, what I'm looking for, what we need, my vision is to have a character coach uh, assigned to every single sports team in this county. Mm. Um, and that's a big vision, but in order for that to happen, we need volunteers. And so I kind of tell people this all the time, there's somebody out there that may not do FCA full time, but man, they love tennis when they were in high school, or they love volleyball, and they love Jesus. And so we've got tennis teams that that uh, would love for somebody to come once a week and, and bring popsicles or waters or Gatorades and have somebody pour into their life. So I need volunteers. Um, I'm looking to add staff uh, in mm -hmm. this area and for that to happen. Uh, obviously, we, we have a big financial need. I mean, we, mm -hmm. um, we it's, it's, kind of, it's not like a regular Is organization. Is this paid staff or volunteered staff? Well, I'm looking for paid staff, um, <laughs> okay. but in the same sentence, we have to raise money to pay staff. And yes. so the need in that is, is financial resources because uh, it's not like I can just go out and say, hey, I love you and I love the fact that you love Jesus. Come work for us. Mm -hmm. we got to say, yeah. I love your heart. Now let's go raise your support, you know, <laughs> and so um, so we, that's a big need for us is, is, is financial so that we can bring on uh, more staff so that we can go deeper into these schools and okay. these teams. What about you, Brooke? Um, I'd say the greatest need, first and foremost, probably for every FCA staff person is a prayer, big, bold mm -hmm. prayers, you yes. know, uh, the ones that you're afraid to pray. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just to come alongside them, support them, love them, um, just let them know that you're with them. Uh, that is so important for someone who's going out and doing this every day because as you mentioned there are times there are there is pushback and and there are times that just like in every other job you, you get up and you're tired and you're mm -hmm. frustrated and discouraged the enemy attacks us um, so pray 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 now um, you, I, you have the support of the parents of these children uh, I would imagine. Majority of the time, I think that we do. Um, even if it's not from a, a religious or spiritual uh, perspective, they at least see the value in what we're trying to do. Um, and, and those character traits that we talked about, the, the excellence, the teamwork, the service. They it they, all across the board. You know, they, they, they come from the, you know, the Bible is the <clears throat> best source for all that we need to know mm -hmm. about life. But um, those traits can be applied to anything secular, to your business life, to your um, athletic career. So it's, um, Parents are supportive for the most part. Um, as he mentioned, of course, uh, funding is so, so crucial to what we do. Um, you know, God is good and he blesses us. And um, absolutely, uh, you know, if if people have, have prayed about giving, we do mm -hmm. we do need um, that kind of support. Now y'all have the golf tournament. Do you have a golf tournament here yes, in Douglas County? Yes, you need to send me the information yes, on that. Yeah. <laughs> the golf tournaments are always so much fun and it's and it's a time for people to come together. We we do make money from our golf tournaments, but it's also a way for us to minister back to some of the people who have been involved with FCA um, throughout the year. It's it's fun and it's a good time of, of fellowship. I um, used to chair the Character Coalition here in Douglas County and we had a golf tournament. And uh, you had to uh, have students mm -hmm. play on the team, but you could have uh, one uh, adult too. So uh, we always had a team from Alexander. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was a lot of fun because it got uh, firemen, policemen, people like that uh, gave them the opportunity to get to know some of the kids in the uh, area and to be the example. Right. Everybody's them. happy at the golf tournament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I would just say another thing, you know, like he said about recruiting staff, we are actively seeking uh, part-time and full-time staff so that we can continue to grow our ministry. Um, and then volunteer, the volunteer pay is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, it's not tangible, it's not financial, but um, you know, what you receive back is always yeah. bigger than what you're given uh, whenever you're Absolutely. serving the Lord. So um, just, uh, you know, people who <laughs> have wanted to get involved in the community somehow and also happen to love um, 
sports, you know, I'm a softball girl Are and you? love it. And, and I thought that that <laughs> may tennis. be my avenue. I thought that that may be my avenue to FCA and unfortunately, um, I got a bigger role, but uh, uh, baseball, it's not just football, it's um, any, any sports that are in our schools, you know, um, if you have a heart for that and a heart for Jesus, uh, you know, we would love to talk, All right. talk to you, so. And Jeff, what, what are your needs? Do you have a, a golf tournament? We uh, do. Fundraiser? We, or, we actually have the first golf <coughs> tournament of the new year. We have it the first week of March. And, and we call it the uh, icebreaker. And uh, <laughs> we like having it first. Good idea. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Catchy. We like having it first so everybody can kind of, you know, coming out of winter, they're, th they're thinking March, warm weather. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not in March. But uh, our golf tournament, we've had it now for five years, and the funds go to help us raise money to send kids and coaches and their families to our FCA summer camps. They also help us purchase Bibles. And if we have an excess above a certain amount, we'll help our staff with their funding. But the, but the majority of it goes, we just get it and we give it right back. And uh, as far as our needs go, same thing as the staffing. Uh, there are 247 churches in Carroll mm -hmm. County, and we have 25 church partnerships. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pastors and youth pastors who would like to have access to the schools, but they're, they're okay. misinformed. They think they can't go into yes. the school. But because the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is a recognized school club, as Jay said, we have access to it. And so we'd love to have more church partnerships. Another thing is that sometimes kids come to Christ through our ministry. We are not a church. We would rather get them plugged into a local church. Mm -hmm. And so, as Jay said, we're the bridge between the church and the school. Mm -hmm. And so we'd really like to have more church partnerships and not just because of the finances, but because of the relationship that we can help get kids plugged into their church, get their youth pastors plugged into the schools. It's just a wonderful relationship. When, that, when they catch the vision, uh, they, can't, they can't believe how great it is. It really is a neat thing yeah. to see. Um, this has been uplifting and it's very, uh, been very informative. Uh, I applaud y'all for the jobs that you do. I know why you do it. Uh, you're, you're all called to this, I know that, and uh, you just have love in your heart, and you want to share that love with your community, with the kids, and this is gonna help the next generation coming up and everything. And I know we were all born with a void somewhere right in here that can only be filled by our Lord Jesus, so I, uh, I just thank you for what you're doing, um, and if I can ever help you, please, call upon me. Uh, so is there anything that you would like to add? I'm good. We thank you for the opportunity yes. to, uh, to get our voice out. Yes. Um, a lot of people know the, the brand FCA. They know the, they know the cross and, and the three letters, but um, uh, they, don't, they don't know a lot of what goes on uh, and, and how we're able to do the ministry that we do. So we're all grateful that you give us the opportunity to, to share a little bit deeper into the ministry of what God has called us to. All right. Yes. How about just, you? I just echo Brooke? his his gratitude and. and now, Brooke, thank you. you were nervous about coming up, yes. and you look <laughs> so at ease. Oh well. Uh, you know, some people get a little stage fright and everything. You have been just wonderful. Thank you. did you. great. Well, you've been such a gracious host, <laughs> and I think we've all had a good time. So <laughs> good. And Jeff, you got anything to add? You'd like to add? Not really. But we just thank you, and yeah. we thank all of our partners who help us to do what we do. All right. Um, I just ask that the community just reach out to their local FCA, support them, volunteer, play golf with them, whatever, furnish food for them, and popsicles. So uh, uh, I think we're, we're showing their uh, websites um, while we're filming this program. So reach out there, help. This is a good thing for the community. It's a good thing for uh, the state of Georgia and Douglas County, Paulding County, Carroll County, but it's a good thing for everybody. It's a good thing for our country. So uh, reach out, help these, support them, and uh, we will see wonderful things come out of this. Thank you, and I uh, thank you for joining in at uh, District Dialogue, and I can't wait to see you next time. Thank you.